Welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as a thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five star rating and a review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, folks, today Ripple released their Q4 2023 XRP markets report, and I want to highlight two key points in here. I'm obviously not going to read through the entire thing. You guys can certainly do that. The first is regarding institutional sales of XRP. And the reason why this is important is the SEC recently won the motion to compel to have Ripple provide the 2022 and 2023 reports to them. And uh, that was part of, I think, their plan to negotiate a higher uh, penalty that Ripple would have to pay. So let me read the following for you so you get an idea of the context. Looking ahead, Ripple and the SEC will enter the remedies phase of the case, focused on institutional sales. Legal briefs will be submitted in March and April of this year, and then the court will decide which remedies to impose. Even prior to the court's July ruling, Ripple had changed the way it sold XRP, and going forward, we will ensure that Ripple's sales conform to the legal standards articulated by the court. Ripple will continue to raise the bar on compliance, ethics, and transparency, and invest the resources necessary to ensure compliance with the law as it continues to evolve in the space. Now, the key word there is they changed the way they sold XRP. So it could be that the SEC getting this small victory in the motion to compel is a moot point because Ripple has already updated things. And, you know, in my recent interview with Meta Lawman, James Murphy, I'll be publishing that tomorrow. Uh, he mentioned like, hey, a lot of the sales for ODL and so forth is happening overseas and the SEC doesn't have jurisdiction over that. So I think, you know, the recent small victory the SEC got for that motion to compel is a moot point and it doesn't seem like it's going to have too much of an impact. All right. Second, Ripple licensing wins. So licensing frameworks have helped establish regulatory clarity, attracting companies, entrepreneurs, investments, and fostering sustainable innovation. In Q4, Ripple, including subsidiaries, obtained licenses in major markets, including its full major payments institution license granted by the Monetary Authority of Singapore and its registration as a virtual asset service provider by the Central Bank of Ireland. To date, Ripple holds a New York Bit license and has secured money transmitter licenses in 40 jurisdictions in the U.S. That's pretty big, folks, um, the amount of licenses they have. And they have the most coveted license, and that is the New York Bit license, which is so hard to get. There are crypto companies that have been waiting years for this. I've spoken to many representatives from many of these crypto companies, and it is hard to get the license, folks. So the fact that Ripple has this is pretty incredible. So those are the two major takeaways, and uh, we'll have to see how things go with the SEC versus Ripple in settling. Well, I shouldn't say settle, but but the coming to the remedies part of this lawsuit, and hopefully it's wrapped up soon. And here's an interesting article from Coin Telegraph highlighting that despite the XRP price being down, whales are opening bullish leverage long positions. So XRP on the charts is in a falling wedge. Looks like it's going to bottom out and then break out. You know, to what price? I don't know. Could we get to 80 cents or something like that? Could we get to a dollar? We'll have to wait and see. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not just XRP. It's other altcoins as well. And with Bitcoin's current move to 45K, some of that liquidity will flow to the alt. So you can see alts pop off. But XRP on the charts looks like it's positioned to do that, folks. So... Be on the lookout. Let's see what happens in the coming weeks and uh, if XRP is going to go in the move. Now, folks, as many of you may know, Prometheum launched their Ethereum custody service. I interviewed Aaron Kaplan of Prometheum. If you haven't seen that interview, check it out. We talk about a lot of things like is Ethereum a security, Bill Hinman, much more. Now, here's the interesting part, folks. And I don't think a lot of people are talking about this. And in the interview, Aaron Kaplan kind of alluded to it. Prometheum has a license, the special broker dealer license, which allows them to custody what they would call digital asset securities. The first asset they go and list is Ethereum. What has Gary Genser refused to say before Congress is Ethereum a security or not, right? Patrick McHenry famously 
Tell us, sir, is Ethereum a security? Gary Gensler just remains quiet, right? So what's happening here? Gary's not reiterating Bill Hinman or Jay Clayton's statements about Ethereum. Uh, they have not approved an Ethereum spot ETF. And Prometheum gets this license, and they are treating Ethereum as a security. They're not just saying, hey, we listed Ethereum. And here's a prime example. They literally tweeted out, Prometheum Capital is thrilled to announce ETH as the first digital asset security for institutional custody on our platform. What's happening here? This Is this a plan by Gary Genser? Is this the next sneaky move by Gary Genser? Remember, Gary's no dummy. He's a smart guy. And I, I never said he was dumb or, or he's some low IQ dummy or something like that. No, no, no. He's a smart guy. He's a Goldman Sachs guy. What I've said is he's a scumbag. He knows what he's doing, right? Years ago, this man was teaching about crypto at MIT. He tried to go work for Binance. Then all of a sudden, he comes to the SEC and does a 180. But that's because he is a puppet on strings being controlled by Elizabeth Warren, who's controlled by Jamie Dimon and the Trad Five folks who want to slow this market down and come in and take over. That is the end game. But the fact that Prometheum is doing this and positioning ETH as a digital asset security. Who has been calling crypto assets digital asset securities? Gary. I think this is Gary's sneaky move. Something is going on here, folks. And look, there are people in the market speculating that you know the, the Ethereum ETF will be approved. I don't know about that. I, I was more bullish on Bitcoin spot ETF. I don't know about Ethereum uh, spot ETF. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Ethereum is a security. I think the entire market needs clarity. Just look at what happened with the Ripple situation. XRP was declared intrinsically not a security. We can't have this cherry picking. We need clear regulations and we need to get this market in order. Um, here we got Eric Balchunas of Bloomberg highlighting that ARK Invest, which is Kathy Wood, ARK slash 21 shares, has just filed an amended S1 for their spot Ether ETF. Looks like they updated to be only cash creations and some other things that bring it in line with recently approved spot Bitcoin ETF prospectus. Now, Nate Garachi, who is president of the ETF uh, store, he said the following. In my opinion, there are three options for the SEC. One, approve the spot Bitcoin ETFs. Two, force closure of the Ethereum futures ETFs, which they just allowed in October. Three, deny and likely face lawsuits since they allowed Ether futures ETFs. Some nuances here, but those are the choices, or these are the choices. Number two and number three seem untenable. So it's interesting. What will Gary do? We, we know he's not slowing down, folks, and he's not budging until the courts make him. Just look at the grayscale situation. He could have easily approved the Bitcoin spot ETFs. He's already declared Bitcoin many times as not a security. Uh, Bitcoin futures have been trading for a long time. So why did it take so long to do this? Why did it take the courts to call him arbitrary and capricious? Once again, he's been controlled by Elizabeth Warren. That's what's happening here. That's his boss. He doesn't care what you and I think. He doesn't care what the crypto industry thinks. Now, what could fix a lot of this is if Congress can act and get regulations through. This week, Janet Yellen called on Congress to pass regulations. So they may do that so that Gary doesn't continue the nonsense here with Ethereum because there's a lot of baggage with Ethereum. Once again, the Bill Hinman speech, Jay Clayton, former SEC chair, echoing Bill Hinman's statements. And then uh, does Gary wants, want to get tied up in litigation where it brings Hinman in for more testimony and more of these things are highlighted like they were in the Ripple lawsuit. These are big questions, folks, and we'll see what happens. But Gary is up to something. There's something sneaky here with this Prometheum thing, and they are echoing the statements that Gary uses. Digital asset securities, right? That's a made-up term by Gary Genser. Now, speaking of ETFs, Matt Hogan highlighted that after one month, and he's from Bitwise, Four of the 25 fastest growing ETFs of all time are spot Bitcoin ETFs. Folks, the capital is flowing in. BlackRock's ETF is, of course, leading billions 
you know, of inflows. It's incredible what is happening. And that's what, one of the reasons I'm so bullish on this upcoming bull market cycle. As the Bitcoin halving takes place, the supply, um, the, the rewards gets cut in half and uh, less Bitcoin to go around. It becomes more harder to mine Bitcoin. The, the mining difficulty rate increases. So uh, it's it's going to be, I think, an epic bull market. And a great indication of that is the amount of inflows into these uh, ETFs. Now, speaking of the SEC, remember the debt box situation, right? The SEC, once again, scumbags, right? They lied to the judge in the debt box situation. They tried to cover it up, sweep it under the rug. Oh, you know, we we didn't do anything, blah, blah, blah. Typical. But the judge said, oh, no, 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 I'm going to sanction your ass. And then the SEC dropped the case, right? Uh, and here we got some senators who have picked up on this, and it looks like they're ready to take action. Eleanor Terrett of Fox Business tweeted out, Republican senators have gotten wind of the debt box fiasco where the SEC intentionally misled a court in order to gain access to emergency relief measures against the company. The group of senators that includes J.D. Vance and Senator Cynthia Lummis says it's skeptical of the mandatory training the agency is requiring for its lawyers as a remedy to the situation. Here's a quote. Perhaps such training is the in the most elementary aspects of legal conduct is necessary. Now, letters are fine. I think they're important for optics and changing the narrative. They got to take action. Patrick McHenry, you have to file the subpoena against Gary Genser. We got to take action. And, and I hope they do. I hope Patrick McHenry does this because these letters, once again, I'm not saying they're not impactful. They are. But they're not keeping Gary Genser up at night. right? When you hand him a subpoena, it's going to be really big. It will be groundbreaking and ground shaking as well. Now, Ron Hammond also weighed in on these on this letter, he's, and this, he's up the Blockchain Association. He said, when describing the SEC's current posture on litigation, former SEC Chair Clayton said, there's been a shift to, if we're not losing cases, we aren't suing enough businesses, which is asinine. So Ron says, well, the L's are racking up and the Senate banking Republicans are taking notice with the latest letter on debt box. Um, but once again, Letters, great. Changes the optics, the narratives, yes. Take action against this guy, uh, Gary Ganser, that is. Now, folks, quick word from our sponsor, and that is Uphold. Uphold is a great crypto platform. I've been using them since 2018. I've interviewed the CEO, the CFO, many representatives. They have 260 plus cryptocurrencies. You can buy Bitcoin and all the top altcoins. You can also trade precious metals on here, gold, silver, palladium, platinum. They have stable coins. They have a lot of national currencies. They're available in over 150 countries. They have a great app. Best of all, folks, they are fully reserved. You can go view their transparency reports and audits. They don't commingle. They don't lend out your funds. So you can trust this platform. If you'd like to learn more about Uphold, please visit the link in the description. Now, we got news here that Bain Capital Crypto leads a $5.2 million seed round for Ethereum-focused decentralized exchange aggregator Flood. So we continue to see capitals coming in, folks, from VCs and different hedge funds and investment firms, and they're investing in the tokens as well as the companies building the infrastructure of the market. Uh, very bullish. So let me give you some details here. Flood, an Ethereum ecosystem-focused decentralized exchange aggregator, has raised $5.2 million in a seed funding round. Bain Capital Crypto led the round with Arch Archetype and Robot Ventures participating, Flood said Thursday. The round closed in the summer of 2023. Flood co-founder and CEO Francesco told the block, adding that it was structured as equity with token warrants. He declined to comment on valuation, but said... There was also a small funding one year ago with the small investors and a few angel investors. Francesco, a former software engineer at UMA Protocol, declined to share his and his co-founder Jan's full name. Uh, Jan is a crypto developer and the author of Neuronica, a Rust machine learning library, Flood said. As part of leading the round, Bain Capital Crypto has one observer seat on Flood, Francesco said. So uh, interesting, and Flood is a decentralized aggregator, decentralized exchange aggregator that is currently live on Arbitrum 1 and is planning to expand to Ethereum base and optimism in the coming months. So uh, once again, folks, capital is flowing in. Folks are bullish.
Here, we got news that crypto exchanges continue to expand. Kraken and OKX, the latest crypto exchanges moving into new markets. Kraken is the latest crypto exchange set to move into a new market after securing regulatory approval to operate in the Netherlands. The company's virtual asset service provider registration from the Dutch Central Bank allows it to offer its products to clients and professional traders. There, the company said Thursday, the Netherlands has the highest fintech adoption rate among developed economies. Kraken said in a blog post, roughly 20% of Dutch citizens own crypto, according to the exchange. And if you all recall, Coinbase had selected Ireland as its EU MICA hub in October, um, and Kraken had also received an EU e-money institutional license from the Central Bank of Ireland and a vast registration from the Bank of Spain last year. Uh, outside of Europe, competing crypto exchange OKX also expanded to a new market earlier this week. The company's new Argentina platform allows crypto trading and staking for users in South American countries. So folks, global expansion happening with these crypto companies. It's a race for market share. They all want to make money. They know what's coming. The next bull market, another massive cycle. This one even bigger because of the ETFs and uh, further regulatory clarity than we've had in the uh, years past. We're not, you know, where we need to be ideally, um, but you know, we're getting there. And with the EU having their MICA regulation, UK has passed a regulation. We just need the US, the largest capital market in the world to get regulations right. And it's going to bring in a lot more capital, but the ETFs are a great start. So folks, I am bullish. I continue to dollar cost average and buy the dips, buying the blood on the streets. I don't buy pumps. And there will be a point where I will stop buying and I'm looking to sell, right? I'm looking to sell the blow off top, the euphoria phase. So uh, continue to listen and subscribe to this podcast. I'll share my strategies and my updates and what I'm doing. Uh, a great way to support the podcast, folks, that's 100% free, is to please sign up for my free email newsletter and Substack, link in the description. Also follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, as well as Twitter X, all links in the description. Doesn't take a, a dollar out of your pocket. Please, please subscribe. Please follow it. It really helps. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll talk to you all later.